Good afternoon. We'll, uh, we'll get started. Welcome and thanks for taking the time to join this faculty forum uh, where we're going to talk about uh, the primary partnership. It'll be the primary partnership progress. I couldn't come up with another P, but um, on the alliterations. Uh, but this is, uh, we're going to run this like we have other faculty forums. Um, I'm going to talk for a while and give you some information. There'll be a lot of opportunities uh, for questions and discussions. Uh, uh, I, particularly at the end, but feel free anywhere along the line to raise your hand if you have a comment or question. Um, I'll remind you, you see the camera there. Uh, what we do uh, with these are uh, we record them uh, and then we post them uh, on the Provost website and uh, invite people who uh, were unable to attend to uh, view them and send in their comments. So as I say every time, uh, be careful what you say. You don't want to go, uh, go viral uh, uh, and uh, be the latest YouTube. The, the other thing I uh, want to do today, uh, we have joining us uh, from the Darling Marine Center, uh, the director of the Darling Marine Center, Heather Leslie. She's in that chair right there uh, on the laptop. So on, on the count of three, let's all please say, hi, Heather. One, two, three. Hi, hi Heather. Heather. Okay. So she, I don't know if she's, okay, she just acknowledged it. So, good. All right, so today uh, what I want to do is um, really tell you where we're at with the primary partnership um, between University of Maine and University of Maine Machai. I want to thank President Hunter for taking the time uh, to come and join us. Uh, and uh, I'm, actually, Carol Kim also played a very important leadership role in this. And uh, I'm going to give them the invitation to jump in at any point if I got something wrong or if they want to add editorial or color commentary. But the idea is really to kind of take you through from uh, where this started last uh, April, where these conversations started. There's been a lot of work has taken place. Uh, it is not completed, uh, but I will uh, do my best to show you what has uh, uh, occurred and really what the next steps are. And really this is an opportunity for our campus, uh, uh, at least one for, for our campus to uh, have impact and, and uh, uh, on the directions that this moves, uh, give us, you know, raise questions, issues uh, that we want to we want to address. So. Let's uh, talk about then the UMaine, uh, UMaine Machias Primary Partnership. What I did was I cut and pasted some, some things and with mild editing just to give you a flavor. Um, I, this is from kind of the early going to a charge. There's some preliminary stuff, but I wanted to put this up there because it emphasizes an important point. Why are we doing this? Right? Why did we this get started? And sometimes the conversations have progressed in ways that that beginning point has gotten a little bit lost or a little bit behind. But we've, we're doing this because they're struggling at the University of Maine and Machias. Okay? Uh, and and, and I, you know, that's not a controversial thing to say. Uh, you know, the Chancellor says it, it, it's the data are clear. Um, they've been, they've faced, faced some real challenges uh, around you know, enrollment-driven challenges. And, uh, and again, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Uh, the population of Washington County uh, dropping off, uh, college-age uh, folks in Washington County uh, dropping off. Historically, University of Maine and Machias, that's where they drew the lion's share of their students, and there are just fewer of those students. Um, so the campus has uh, struggled financially for quite a long time. And um, this last uh, um, spring, although there were a lot of uh, preliminary discussions, um, there was a decision made to move forward to say, can we help them really to be a more successful campus in such a way that we can also advance our mission. And of course, that's the trick and, and challenge. But um, in, 20, in April, University of Maine Machias, University of Maine, and the University of Maine system announced this primary partnership. And the, the key thing is the goal of the partnerships include Machias campus revitalization, increased enrollment, and operational efficiencies and economies of scale between the two institutions. So again, most of the goal of this is really to try to help Machias. Our interest and goal, of course, is to do that. They're our sister institution. We care about the state of Maine. We, you know, we believe that the institution, University of Maine at Machias, I'm referring to now, plays an important role in Washington County. Um, and we want to do it in such a way that hopefully will also advance our mission through, um, uh, through collaboration. So that's, that's the challenge that was, um, was set out. So how to do this, how to explore uh, this primary partnership, well, the plan was put in place to have this done in three, uh, three phases. Uh, uh, first one looking at uh, administrative areas and how some of those areas might be integrated, how we might um, uh, address things by uh, taking advantage of economies of scale uh, and really 
again, I think to speak frankly, to help to address some things that they just haven't been able to support at the Machais uh, campus, important administrative functions that their uh, person power has sunk uh, de deteriorated to a point, uh, not, the, not the individuals, just the sheer numbers, that they're, they're not getting uh, the work done. Um, the second piece was to look at curricula and to look at the, the academics, if you will, and to see whether we could, <clears throat> um, what kinds of alignments, collaborations could be developed to support a primary partnership. And the third piece, perhaps maybe the most challenging, is to look at structure and governance. And again, to speak frankly, should they continue as an independent you know, university? Should they become a, a campus of the University of, of Maine? What, if they be independent, how would they, how would a relationship with us help to sustain them? That, that's tough work, and I'll tell you where it's at uh, later. So let me, what I want to do is walk through these, because these were done sequentially, and President Hunter and I were talking this morning whether one could raise the question about whether this was the right sequence, but this was the sequence we did, so I'll, uh, I'll present it that way, uh, that each of these were, were, were done in order. So first we'll talk about the uh, uh, administrative integration um, uh, work, uh, and then we'll talk about uh, uh, the, the next two. So first thing that's happened was a team was formed. There's the, the team from our uh, university. Um, Vice President uh, Kim uh, led this. She was uh, a chair. Uh, Vice President Robert Dana, Associate Provost uh, Jeff St. John were the UMaine team, the key, uh, the key players. Uh, and then um, from Machias, they had Mel Adams, Amy Lentz, and Marianne Thibodeau. Mel jumped shipped at some point and uh, was replaced by uh, Kay Kimball, who is the provost uh, uh, at the University of Maine at Machias. Uh, our very own Larry Llewellyn uh, was a consultant to help the group uh, move along. And Dave Stevens, who had been the head of um, uh, Office of Institutional Efficiency or effect Organizational Effectiveness. Thank you. Organizational <laughs> Effectiveness, which is sometimes referred to as the Dilbert Department, but um, <laughs> is uh, in, in the Organizational Effectiveness Unit. Um, was um, there. Dave left at, at some point take another job and um, uh, Tamara Mitchell from the Organizational Effectiveness was there to support it. Um, okay, <clears throat> so what were they charged with doing? So this team, they were asked to study the administrative services, look for what the, um, the opportunities there were for collaboration or consolidation or unification of the um, uh, of the administrative services that would save costs, be more, uh, more efficient, provide a better service. Right. Now I want to show you another piece of their charge because I think it's important and it's been, to be frank, a bit confusing over time. But they were very explicitly uh, charged to do, according to the Office of Organizational uh, Effectiveness, um, there are four steps to this kind of work, analysis, design, implementation, and audit. And they were very explicitly charged to do the first two steps, analysis and design. So really, the, the charge to the task team was, hey, assess this, figure this out, um, and then come up with some recommendations of, the, of what we might do. Uh, very ably uh, done, what they, uh, the group did was they uh, uh, brought folks together, looked at what are the administrative functions on each of the campus, where, what are the overlaps, and um, they identified you know, uh, broad areas of administration, and they identified areas that would be the primary administrative areas that they would focus on. And they identified these five, uh, I got count right, yeah, five areas. They then did identify another set of secondary uh, areas to look at, and even a tertiary uh, 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 group of areas. But where they started, and I'm not going to go into this, the secondary and third one because they, that work really hasn't happened, but the, the, where they started was looking at enrollment management, marketing and communication, human resources, student affairs, and research administration. Now you'll notice the asterisk there. Uh, again, just to make this um, you know, clear as mud, uh, even though their task was to do this uh, analysis and come forward with recommendations, we actually started implementing uh, in a couple of areas. We actually started implementing before this task group ever got to work. Uh, primarily in enrollment management, uh, primarily around, uh, well, first off in financial aid. Uh, for most of last year, we were running their financial aid operation uh, from here. So we were already had taken on uh, some of the responsibilities. And very uh, quickly in the summer, 
we began to take on uh, a more uh, insignificant role in actually running their admissions enrollment management operation. I, I would say uh, those things occurred uh, before the report was out, primarily out of necessity. Uh, they were just not functioning, and uh, uh, for the institutions to stay, to that institution to stay afloat, they needed help, and we stepped in to help. We also were doing their ORSP work, and that started last spring, was it, or uh, prior to this task, uh, test work? Just, just getting the, the MOU. Right, we got an MOU organized where we would do their ORSP. Now, the volume of their ORSP work is very small, certainly relative to our campus, but uh, this sort of grant uh, processing, grant preparation work, we're, we started to do for them uh, before this started. So, uh, Carol was, uh, I don't know if you were elected, elevated, everyone else left the room, but Carol became chair uh, of this uh, group and did a fantastic job of, of hurting folks. What they did was they got teams together in each of these areas to, to, from Machais and, and Humane to work. Each of those groups brought far, forward uh, reports. Carol worked to synthesize those. Uh, they were given a, quite an early uh, deadline, early in July. The uh, first draft of the report was, or, or the report actually was produced uh, by first week or so in July. Uh, it went to uh, President Hunter and President Huseman at um, University of Maine at Machias. Uh, they did a first look at, gave some feedback. Uh, it went to the Chancellor, some additional commentary, and then uh, in early August, the final report uh, was completed. Now, I'm not going to go through the, the whole report. I did post it. Uh, so it is uh, posted on the, the faculty forum website, so if you want to uh, look at it, it's, it's there. Um, but I did think I'd, I'd pulled out you know, some of the general recommendations, and then I'm going to show you after this some of, the, uh, uh, some of the specific recommendations, not so much to get into the details of it, but just to give you a flavor, because it isn't an exhausted list of the specific recommendations. But the general ones were, okay, let's look at the, the existing Machias staff, Train them on the relevant protocols and procedures that our staff are using in these areas. Uh, that there's a little more to it to help them sort of be in line with APLs, uh, administrative practice letters from the system. Uh, if, they're, if they're not, a, 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 we either need to, to change the APL or help them to get in, in line with that. Uh, you'll notice that they, were, they also said, look, what can we do with minimal resources, what's going to take us more significant investment of resources? And they said that this could do with, you know, a minimal uh, investment of resources. This one, would we would start to assume in some of the areas the duties or responsibilities um, in some of these administrative areas. If we were to do that, of course, that is going to require uh, resources. Again, just to add a slight bit of editorial commentary, the confusion about that you know, that, that, that losing track of the fact that this was an analysis and recommendations plan, not an implementation plan, was lost a little bit. And so we'd moved forward, or, or some parties believe we should have been moving forward on some of the uh, implementation, and we've had to kind of have some, um, uh, what's the right word, sort of heart-to-heart uh, uh, -heart conversations about, uh, okay, well, who's paying for this? Um, you know, we can't uh, do this all on our time and dime. Uh, although, uh, I will say, we are doing uh, quite a bit on our time uh, and, and on, particularly in the uh, financial aid and admissions uh, area. Okay, so the idea was when we found redundancies, they'd be identified, either eliminate or reorganize to reduce um, redundancies to, 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 to produce cost savings. Again, this is where we're getting to uh, economies of scale. They recommended that a global MOU be uh, put together. Uh, and that there be specific uh, separate agreements for each of these functional administrative areas, uh, and that um, our assessment of the function areas be completed, uh, and that we would track the progress of this. Okay, so the idea that we'd track progress over time. These were the sort of broad um, general recommendations. And again, I'll show you just kind of quickly um, some of the things, you know, and, and again, there, there were, they came up with key recommendations. That is, these are the things we ought to move on quickly um, if we're going to, you know, uh, have some impact. Um, and there was more than one under each. I just grabbed one uh, from the report. Uh, under enrollment management, uh, our uh, vice president, Joel Winkowski, would take over and provide guidance and consultation. And we have, in fact, moved forward with that. So Joel is providing them uh, with very, um, you know, quite a bit uh, of consultation uh, around enrollment management. 
I think it's fair to say, and not, not insulting to, to anyone, anyone but they had such turnover in that area um, that it really was not functioning. Uh, and uh, that was a, that's a significant problem, given that enrollment is the number one uh, challenge that they have there, that they really had an, uh, uh, a non-operative, a non-functioning uh, enrollment management system. So uh, Joel did step in quite quickly. Uh, we actually had a, uh, we agreed uh, that a University of Maine enrollment management employee, real um, rising star, kind of really uh, hardworking, sharp uh, young uh, woman, we would go there and be employed by Machias, but would take her directions from Joel to help try to get their operation uh, up and running. Um, some of the other things were more, were going forward, the registrar is suggesting that we needed to match the course block timelines, building that. But they said, look, we've got to wait and see what comes out of the academic teams or the second phase. Um, uh, we'd help them with some of their processes around past due. Uh, we'd align some of their practices um, uh, in financial aid uh, or some of the other things. Um, uh, we, they really needed an overhaul of their website um, uh, to really make it contemporary. That would have been, uh, wasn't important or needs to be a, a step taken forward. We share a director of uh, of human resources. Uh, we'd include some of their, or we'd include as many as we could, their, um, their folks in our student, in our leadership meetings, provide them a consultation, open access to things that uh, uh, Robert Daner and his team are doing here uh, to help them provide uh, them some uh, uh, support and professional development. And as I've already mentioned, we, we're doing their ORSP uh, uh, operations. So this report was uh, completed. Uh, sent forward, um, um, I would say you received sort of minimal feedback, I, I think is a, a fair statement, but it, 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 it exists. Okay, so the second broad area that then which began the summer is curriculum and program alignment or the academic uh, program areas. Similarly, uh, a, a team was put together, this was much smaller, uh, so this was myself and uh, Kay Kimball, who's the provost, uh, at, at our interim provost at uh, University of Maine at Machias. Uh, and we were charged with uh, getting, it, getting it organized uh, to look at uh, how we might do curriculum and program alignment to support a primary partnership. So again, I'll show you the specifics of, uh, of what we had, that, that this is the language that came down. This task is to stand an intercampus, this task team is to stand up an intercampus a team of faculty and academic leaders to develop prioritized curriculum and program structures that support, for example, 2 plus 2 and 4 plus 1 student enrollments as well as shared or complementary courses. So where can we build collaborative uh, programs where students would start at one campus, completed at another, students would have easy pathways to uh, graduate degrees, where can we be sharing courses uh, to enhance the quality of programs at both, um, at both institutions. Uh, one paragraph I, I uh, insisted, get inserted. Uh, I was concerned that, that these conversations would all be in the hypothetical uh, uh, and that I said, look, we need to have a grounding in, in enrollment data. Um, you know, the, the reality is, um, you know, our programs are vastly different in size um, and that, that has to be some kind of grounding. We had to have realistic assessment of the faculty and the facilities. Uh, we had to be thoughtful about accreditation standards and state needs as we um, move forward with these uh, kinds of plans. Um, again, to be frank, my concern was there'd be a lot of ideas about really kind of cool programs for which we didn't have the faculty or their facilities or state, uh, there are no jobs in it and no one needs them, but they really are cool. Um, so we wanted to give it some, some grounding. And again, I'm just repeating that, that again, we were asked to do an, uh, the analysis and design but not move forward with implementation. Uh, this, we had, a, 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 with this work started in June and we had until October to produce a report uh, to get it to the Chancellor in time for the November Board of Trustee meeting. So what we did was form teams around in 10 areas and nine of these areas align with or are essentially aligned with um, the nine undergraduate degrees that they offer at the uh, University of Maine at Machias. So they have nine degree programs um, and so we, we, we decided um, uh, that we would build teams around those. So these are the areas um, that we had. The tenth team was general education. We wanted folks to look at, get put together a team to look at, um, again, similarly, how might we align 
uh, the general education so that people could, if they were moving from campus to campus, they would be prepared. They wouldn't be, they would have made progress uh, in gen ed. Uh, we would again elevate the quality of what uh, was available um, in general education. So these folks got to work in, we brought them here, everyone here, this is, these were teams, I'm sorry, for each one of these areas, it was teams of faculty, in some cases uh, key administrators uh, served on these teams. Uh, we brought them to, uh, to here, out to campus, actually this room, um, uh, back in around mid-June or so, uh, to launch them, we gave them uh, their charges, uh, I think I got that here, maybe I, yeah, that's a lot of words, but. This was uh, the, from the charge we gave them to you know, examine this, look for opportunities to develop these kinds of collaborative uh, programs. It's somewhat redundant with the prior one. Now this one, you know, I just pulled from the Business and Entrepreneurial Studies. That's the degree that they offer at UMM. They all read similarly. You could you know, replace the other uh, degree areas. But we charged the teams uh, with, with doing this. Um, we, um, you know, kind of had a working day here at the university and then really said to them, you know, it's up to you. You figure out how you want to continue to work on this, uh, you know, electronically, conference calls. We would support, or the system would provide support if you wanted to get together to cover costs uh, with that. And we asked for a, um, a uh, draft report uh, early in August, I think August 11th, but some, some point early uh, in August uh, from the teams. We got those draft reports, Kay and I reviewed them and uh, provided the teams with feedback and then set up a, a, another meeting, this one at the University of Maine at Machias uh, later in August, I think it was August 17th if I remember right, uh, for them then to, we, well, the, the purpose was to address sort of general questions that might have cut across teams, but then send the teams off, uh, off to work, uh, giving them uh, sometime in uh, September uh, to, to send their final reports. Now, of course, the keen observer will say, gee, this took place all over the summer. Faculty aren't on contract in the summer. Uh, and we were aware of that. So for the faculty involved with this, and one, issue, one part of that issue is uh, uh, you know, asking people to work when they're not on contract. So we provided stipends for them. But the more important issue, at least from my mind, the more important issue was you know, they needed to run these by their faculties. Right? These are looking subgroups sub of faculty. So in August, we asked them to say, look, you know, early as you can in the semester, get this to the get what's coming out of your, um, uh, your, your teams uh, to your departmental faculties, to the curriculum committees in your departments, so they have an opportunity to, to weigh in. We asked for the reports back, again, I think it was around September 26th. Um, and then we did post these reports on um, you know, Google Drive, and you all received an email from me saying, if you want to read them, anyone can read you know, anybody's report. They've now been seen by the, the faculties in the units and now it's open to the, uh, to the entire um, un two universities uh, to gather information. Believe it or not, actually a few people did, and I got, we got feedback uh, from them. And then Kay and I then took uh, that feedback plus these uh, reports, and, and we produced our report. Um, and we almost made the October 15th deadline. We submitted on October uh, 17th. And again, just to give you a flavor of what was in there, um, these were the kind of summary recommendations. What we did was look at the reports. There was some consistency across the nine areas about the kinds of things the teams were recommending. Uh, and so we, we pulled out these at six areas. Um, not surprisingly, we talked about uh, how or a lot of the teams looked at how we could develop transfer programs, programs where students start at one university and complete, complete, the deg complete, complete a degree at another university. Uh, Primarily, this was about students starting at Machias and transferring here to the University of Maine, but we also uh, talked about, some of the teams talked about uh, creating opportunities where students would start here at UMaine and transfer uh, to complete one of the programs um, uh, at Machias. Several teams talked about pathways to uh, graduate education and uh, seeing that there could be things that could be done with the curriculum uh, at the Machias side or on our side so that students were, would be able to come uh, to the University of Maine uh, and complete a master's degree in one year. Uh, some, some of them had put together four plus one or three plus two uh, um, proposals. There were several proposals for shared, or that included shared courses, courses that would uh, behoove both, in, um, both campuses. And again, it was somewhat lopsided with more of our courses being shared to, to benefit the, uh, their students, but not fully. I know in education, they have some uh, um, expertise in special education that we don't have here. 
you know, could enhance our curriculum if our students had access to that. There's some special areas uh, within the, the fine arts uh, that they had, and, and those reports included recommendations about uh, May term or other ways to take advantage of, of, of facilities and expertise uh, at the campus, at, at the Machias campus. And of course, we have facilities here that students could benefit from as well. So um, there were a variety of suggestions about that. Um, some teams thought there, were, might be, there would be opportunities for University of Maine graduate students to uh, have a, a, an experience teaching at Machias that would enhance the students, um, uh, would provide potential funding for students who are looking, uh, graduate students looking for funding, would provide them an opportunity uh, to round out their, uh, their CVs by teaching at a small university, um, and it would benefit uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, or enhance the curricula uh, at Machias. And so there were some of those uh, types of recommendations. Finally, more in the nitty-gritty and less content, uh, there several teams pointed out that you know we could develop these, but it's really pointless unless someone takes responsibility for marketing this. Right? We're, we need to let the folks know that these are unique opportunities. We, they need to be marketed, um, uh, and this needs to be if we're just going to succeed. Part of our enrollment management strategy, and then everyone agreed, particularly at the two plus two type programs or other shared programs that really uh, intrusive type advising uh, would be necessary, that these students, we had to get to them early and often, so that they understood and they, were, they continued to be uh, on track to succeed if they transfer between universities. As I said, that report was submitted on October 17th. Um, we, um, well actually, the, the President Hunter and, and uh, President Huseman uh, provided feedback we took the final version that was given to the chancellor, um, and uh, with some prodding, we got a brief, uh, a brief uh, acknowledgement uh, of uh, of receipt, and then uh, it, that did, I think, inform uh, what was presented to the board of trustees. So the third phase of this work started this uh, fall, and again, that's the bigger question of looking at what will be the relationship between these two uh, these two entities. Um, they were charged with analyzing, looking at the organizational structure and governance to come up with options for what this primary partnership uh, might look like. Now the makeup of this group uh, included the presidents of the two universities, um, a board of visitor member from each university, uh, a member of the board of trustees, Bonnie Newsom, uh, Jim Thalen, who's the University of Maine Systems General Counsel and also the Chancellor's Chief of Staff, and Tamara Mitchell from Organizational Effectiveness. Um, so they were, uh, they were the, the structure and governance, or they are the structure and governance team. Um, they, so in preparation for the Board of Trustee meeting, they put together a brief uh, report that summarized so, sort of some of what, what um, sort of the, the kind of outcomes that, that, that I mean, the first ones, as you, the title indicates, must have. Whatever this partnership looks like, it has to be include these, in, these pieces, and I'll, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so, uh, whatever happens, um, you know, the primary partnership has got to achieve the goal that was set out last April, which is to create a stable Machias uh, uh, campus, interested in maintaining its unique uh, uh, identity and serving uh, down East Maine. That's a commitment that uh, the Chancellor's made, the Board of Trustees is committed to, uh, and that, so whatever uh, this partnership involves um, has to continue that whatever the entity is in Machias has to serve these uh, purposes. Uh, another piece was that this entity in Machias would continue to deliver some degree programs and at the very least it would con con uh, continue to deliver the degrees in the, the areas they consider their signature areas. Environmental Rec and Tourism, Psychology and Community Studies, English Creative Writing and Book Arts, and Marine Biology. These are the areas they've identified as their signature uh, uh, program. So again, from my, from my point of view, um, I, I actually see this as progress, uh, that their, their acknowledgement that they, what they need is some degree programs, but not all nine of their degree programs. And, and I, I, to be frank, I think that is progress. When President Hunter and I were up there last spring, uh, there was a, some discussion about, well, of course, we'll always have our, uh, the programs that we have here. Personally, I, I don't think that's realistic. I was pleased to see that in the report. 
There's also a little bit about, and they'll also have access to, to programs here uh, at the University of Maine. So the idea is that the entity down there will continue to serve the Machias area as, you know, in the way it does economically, culturally, um, that there will be degree programs offered through that entity, on, on, in all likelihood not the full array that they offer now, and that this, uh, the, the uh, entity will have relationships with us that allow students to take advantage of the academic opportunities here at the University of Maine. Uh, other must-haves. Okay, so it's got to address the, um, it's got to stabilize and grow enrollment uh, uh, at Machias, uh, and in some way further our mission, which is a statewide mission, and uh, the mission associated with the Land and Sea Grant University. Another piece they feel is important, and again, I personally see this as a bit of progress, but they feel it's important that there is a person who is the campus leader who is a resident there. Now, it's progress in the sense that it doesn't say they will have to have a president. Um, so I think there's some flexibility in thinking about uh, how they would have a leader. Now, for those of you uh, who are, uh, have been bored or curious, like I was at one time, uh, actually looked up this law that people have talked about, about the seven, you must have seven campuses. That's actually consistent with the language of the law. Language doesn't say it has to have a president. It has to have some kind of leader. So, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, um, I th again, from my point of view, is acknowledging that this leader may not be at the same level um, as a president. The, the desired outcomes, so I guess these would be the things that, you know, if they don't absolutely have to be there, pretty damn close after uh, uh, we went them there. This is one that we advocated for uh, quite strongly. President Hunter advocated for. It's important for us that they, rep they maintain separate reporting with respect to these uh, things that you see in uh, OPEID and IPEDS, which maybe President Hunter knows what those stand for, but I don't. Um, but they have to do with the U.S. Department of Education. They're very important because our institutional goals, and for those who you were at the budget talk earlier this week, our institutional goals are to not only grow our enrollment, to, but to, be, to become a somewhat more selective institution, to raise our uh, selectivity. The reality is that students who attend the University of Machias have, uh, they have an, uh, um, they're more a, closer to an open access campus. They have lower SAT, high school uh, rank, et cetera. We don't want to harm our reputation, our institutional's reputation, which would have a negative impact on our ability to recruit out-of-state students and Maine's best and brightest students. So we're saying, look, we really think these, you know, whatever the entity is, that this reporting things about their, their students remains separate from the University of Maine. We have been able to find examples around the country where this takes place. And it's the same institution, actually, giving, this, giving the same degree, or, or the degree has the same name on it, uh, Penn State University being one example. Um, but the data on these are kept separately. Okay. So we know that it, at least in, in parts of the United States it can occur. I think we're, our signals from NIESC, we're hoping, is that they can her, occur here. Again, this is, I think, a point that they want to emphasize. If they, if they lose status as having a president, et cetera, they still want to have representation uh, at the universe, to the university main system. Um, they want to have some kind of board of visitors or advisory board to, their, to, the, to the entity that is there. Uh, they'd like to maintain separate athletic programs. And that this collaboration, and I don't know, for me it's a little bit of department of redundancy department because that's the whole uh, point is to increase the student opportunities um, but that whatever we come up with will we'll, uh, work toward these goals, increasing opportunities for students, increasing enrollment at Mach Machias, facilitating movement between the two entities and expanding uh, research opportunities um, down at Machias. Now, please. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. On the must-have list, I'm sorry that President has been reminded. It wasn't on the draft, and I meant to add it. One of the must-haves is we're not footing the bill for this. We being University of Maine, uh, and President was very strong in, in saying that we're not taking this on uh, as an unfunded burden or mandate. We have to figure out a financial model that this is not coming completely at, or at the expense of the University uh, of Maine. So part of what's going to happen next, I mean, what this government, what this committee is, is saying, and I, I'll put in my words, but again, as President Hunter to, to jump in, look, 
and it would, let's look at what these models might be, but not just in sort of, again, this hypothetical way, but let's look at the finances of it. What would the budget look like if University of Maine Machias became a campus of the University of Maine? And what kind of changes to the structure would we have to make? What would that cost, basically? What would the, what would the enrollment have to be for it to not be a money-losing <coughs> operation? Um, or if they maintained as an independent campus from us, and yet we provide some of the services, again, we're not doing that for free, so there's costs associated with that. What kind of enrollment would they have to have? What would be the costs, the savings for them to that, because they don't have to do those uh, functions themselves, they get, we, we cover them, is that, could that be a model that would be financially sustainable? And again, I wanted to show that, they, that even though they're saying that uh, among these are looking at a, a variety of alternatives, but at least two. One is uh, they become a branch of the University of Maine. And the other is, is that they, um, they become affiliated. That is, they are still a more of an independent uh, operation. And so what the committee is saying is, look, we need this financial analysis in order to move, uh, to move forward. So that's where they're at in terms of next steps. So, and I, you know, well, I'll just say, this is the timeline. And, uh, I guess ambitious is where it pops into my mind, but this is the timeline. So between now and January, they're going to figure out the financial projections and a budget model for these different alternative primary partnerships. Right? So what would be the budget model and how would it ha what would it have to look like you know, to, to be financially stable or financially sustainable? And if it, again, if it's an independent institution or a campus of the University of Maine, how can that be sustainable? During this time, we're going to engage the campuses in input about primary partnership models. Today is a first step toward engaging our campus uh, to providing input. Uh, and then, um, I'll just say <laughs> my words, believe it or not, uh, by the January 2017 uh, Board of Trustee meeting, there'll be uh, a recommendation, and it got down here in the trees, but uh, implemented by July 1st, 2017. Um, again, ambitious, um, an ambitious outline. That's where it stands. First, let me ask President Hunter. Other comments, that you, questions that would cover, kind of questions, comments or additional information you can provide to folks? I, I don't, well, I don't think, I honestly don't think there's more I can add. Um, it is very ambitious. We are trying to, um, Diplomatically uh, shape this in a way that uh, you know doesn't it isn't a, a runaway locomotive. It it can't be. Um, you can't build their budget into our budget overnight. That suggestion did come to me this week. Um, I said that would be ridiculous and silly, and we can't do that. More or less in that order. And so. Um, <laughs> But we're going to have to let the modeling occur. And I really think what happened uh, more or less in the last week or so is, you know, you know Becky and Ryan, uh, you know, the CFO and the Vice Chancellor for Finance and Administration need to be at the table working to build out the finances so we can describe these possibilities. I think the idea of the affiliation model, is, uh, you know, and maybe this is a transition, frankly, that's coming more from the University of Maine Machias. Um, I think that my, my conversations with the Chancellor, um, trustees, uh, and a bit with uh, Barbara Brittingham, who's the uh, um, president of the Commission on Higher Education at NEASC, leads me to believe that they, they really see this as not, uh, not a viable alternative. There's going to have to be a, a pretty dramatic change, but we need to let it work through, but the, the idea of no undue financial burden on the University of Maine is something that is in the document, the trustees have heard it, and Barbara Birdingham at NES absolutely heard it and fully agrees. So there can't be a, a, a situation where we are suddenly inheriting uh, a, a campus that is not financially viable, not, not the way it is right now. So I'll leave it there. Let me just see quickly if either Carol, Jeff, or Robert who were involved in this work have any comments or additions. Okay. Uh, Mike and then Mike. Mike. It sounds like your decision is really being based on the financial models. If the financial there, there's certainly going to be the, 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 the starting point for 
these kind of decisions, yeah. Again, one of my comments early on about doing this backwards, I mean, from my point of view, it might make more sense to say, what's a viable financial model yeah. now? Yeah. How can we fit academic things that promote, you know, opportunities for students, et cetera, et cetera? Well, we were not in charge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, I mean, that's really going to be a big piece of this. It's an extension of that. I mean, I remain very supportive of this. I think the academic potentials are very high. Uh, but one of the things which I'm curious about is, as we're modeling things out financially, this is also in an environment of centralized financial models or centralization of finances within the UM system. And is there clarity as to, well, nothing will come out of UMaine, but we are changing formulation models for apportionments of campuses, and what do you know through another conduit goes that type of support. Mm -hmm. How are the two discussions unfolding simultaneously? I, mean, I was going to cut you off right when you said, is there clarity? <laughs> <laughs> um, no matter what came after that. Um, uh, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very fair and great question, because you're right. There are two things that are happening, um, neither of which um, you know, could I or anyone explain because they're being determined. So on the, you'll hear you know more about this uh, December first when uh, the president and uh, uh, Ryan Lowe are presenting. Uh, but you know they're they're looking at consultants who would come in to identify bench or uh, you know uh, uh, peer institutions for the University of Maine, and then so there's a pretty complex kind of formula. And then at the same time, you're you're absolutely right. So we're going to find what are the uh Peers build that budget and then move it over, or we do. And and I mean, I don't know what to say other than you're right. We have to have our our eyes on this. We have to be asking the, the tough questions because maybe not on purpose, but to get the things to balance, suddenly um, you know, we're losing out. On it. So it, I don't know how to answer your question other than to say we're going to try and look very carefully at because you're absolutely right. John. Uh, has there been any speculation about shared faculty appointments, or are you open to considering some of that? Yeah, I think um, I will speak for myself at the University of Maine We are, um, and again, I think if they became an affiliated, uh, uh, if they became a campus of the University of Maine, it makes that that much easier. But as you know, we can even do it with two, between two uh, uh, two campuses that are that are independently accredited. So uh, I'm certainly open to that. Like. In your presentation, you used the phrase economically stable. You never used the phrase economically self-sufficient. Is it the view of the committee that put the report together that neither the integration model or the affiliation model would be self economically self-sufficient? Well, I mean, I, I think a part of my answer is I'm probably using language sloppily uh, because I mean, my, my intent uh, is to say that, uh, yes, it's a sustainable meaning, you know, uh, well, let's start with the baseline, right? The, the baseline is uh, at the University of Maine, and you, you, I think you were at the budget presentation the other day, you know, for the 15th or more year in a row, we've got a little bit of a budget gap. Right? It's much, much smaller than it has been previously. We, so, and which I <coughs> go back as, a long ways, and each year has had a big budget gap. Um, so in a way, I mean, part of my answer is, well, neither institution has been sustainable to start, right? So how much, you know, how, how you know, so, so it's not as if we're starting from a point where we're not going to budget. Our goal, of course, is to get to the point that neither institution has read ink at the end of the, at the, end of the year. And that, that, you know, so again, I, I apologize if my language isn't as precise as it should be, but the goal is to model Okay, if we can reduce these costs at the University of Maine, which I is, you know, by you know, changing administrative structures, we hire some, you know, we, we make investments here, so we're talking, cost, cost, uh, there are additional costs here to run some of these things. What would the enrollment have to be at Machias? Is that is that realistic? Can we project that? What would the enrollments have to be here? And then all those other assumptions that we're making all the time. What's the state going to do for us? What's this model going to look like uh, to try to get to a, a but the goal is to get to something that is, you know, the, the, the two institutions or the one institution end up, you know, in the black at the end. Right. 
Uh, you mentioned two other aspects of this implementation and audit. Yeah. Could you? Sp I understand implementation, but can you speak to the, the reason and the objective of the audit? I think the objective is to say, okay, we've gone forward with this plan a year out. Is it working? Are we saving fun? Uh, are we saving money? Are people getting the services that they need uh, as you move forward? Do we need to go back and, and, and revisit it? So that's my understanding. So, so the audit sort of precludes. Um, so a final decision would not come until after the audit? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, good question. Okay. I think audit just means Review. Review. Ongoing, yeah. ongoing iteration. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think. Yeah, I, I think that's probably. So it wouldn't be as if, well, the audit didn't turn out very well. Forget primary partnership. Let's go back to square one. It would be, what do we need to do in this area to, you know, <clears throat> you know get the services so they're where they're supposed to be, manage the costs the way they're supposed to be. So it's more, I think, a, a, a thing about ongoing. No. Continuous uh, improvement, yeah. kind of. Model. I had a question on the um, must-have slide about the list of programs because at least one of them has very small enrollment, yeah. you know, steady state of maybe 20 students, yeah. uh, despite being identified as signature. Is that absolutely non-negotiable? Was it 100? Or <laughs> this makes me take the hard ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I don't know. Uh, I, actually, I did have a conversation with, um, was it? I forget who it was from the CHIAS the other day, and, and there was recognition that that program has very few students, uh, probably should be used in a different fashion. That could be a program that would be appealing for summer students. It could actually be, I think, appealing for senior college. There's a different way to use that program, and they have far more majors in their biology program. Um, and I don't know the number, but far more majors in their biology program, which isn't one of their signature areas. So I think there is, uh, I'll say, I think there's some latitude here. And the, the other thought about that, I didn't think of it until you asked the question, well, what does that really mean? I mean, we have, I don't know, 90 undergraduate programs here. Um, you know, we close some of them sometimes. You know, we, you know, we start new ones. But, you know, must have for how long? I mean, clearly we're not going to commit to University of Texas or whatever the idea ends up being called, we'll always have these four programs on into uh, infinity and beyond. Um, yeah, so it is, it's an interesting question, what does must have mean? I, I guess I would interpret it as, as a starting point. Yeah, could you comment a little bit on the requirement that the responses that you guys have had from like, like the legislature, you had mentioned, I think at the budget meeting the other day that you put some real positive feedback. Um, are they weighing in at all on either model or No, no I mean, I, I will say that we haven't had a discussion of, at any granularity, but last spring, before the Chancellor announced the primary partnership, um, he and Ryan Lowe uh, and Sam Collins, the chair of our board, went to Augusta and we met with the governor and we met with several you know, key legislative leaders to give them, you know, kind of a heads up. This is what we're, we're going forward with. And we, there was not one bit of pushback at all. And, in, and that included John Martin, who is a real champion, certainly of Fort Kent, but of the small campuses. Mm -hmm. And in fact, although the phrase, it's about time, didn't actually come forward from anybody, it, they, they spoke around it in a way that what they were saying is, it's about time. There is recognition that we have some very small entities that, that just cannot be independently um, viable. They, they're, they're, the budget of Machias, let me just, the, our base budget is about $253 million. Their base budget is $10 million. Mm -hmm. They have 65 total employees. Half of them are faculty. So, you know, the idea of running uh, a residential institution with all the portfolios that we talk about as being standard, you can imagine that this is, it's not about the quality of any one individual there, it's just way beyond what 30, 30 staff people can manage. I'm not talking about the faculty, it's beyond what they could manage too, but think of those 30 people managing all the portfolios for a residential university. Just, you know. So th there's a recognition that we've got to change how we, how we set up and operate. 
Yeah, no, I think that's really fair. I mean, the, the example I'll pop to my so they look at marketing and communication. So, you know, we have kind of a handful of employees in that area. We, they, they, their marketing and communication is one quarter time person. So basically 10 hours of someone's uh, job. So, you know, it, it raises question why, why, you know, there's got to be economy of scale by mm -hmm. collaborating that. Yeah. Like, um, everything so far, everything seems like you're trying to maintain the status quo of both institutions. And so, current, I current say, that, go ahead. Well, no, I'm just saying I, I haven't heard any um, discussion on the potential new initiatives that might bring a different focus uh, to yeah. Machias that may improve that you know something that may be missing within the system. So that, 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 as I follow your point out, that's clearly true in the academic area. And, you know, when we, when Kay and I uh, made the decision to put together these teams around the degree programs at Machias, at least, well, Monique was one of them, I remember. <laughs> and uh, I think at least a couple other people said, you know, the problem with what you're doing is, you know, you're, you're setting up that this is, what you, this is what's going to happen going forward. And acknowledge that. Um, but the reality was the timeline we had to work with to get to something, some, 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 something that was you know, actionable, concrete, we felt that was the place to start. From my point of view, it goes back to my comments earlier about this kind of being done backwards. I think once we establish what is the relationship, is this a campus of the University of Maine? What, you know, what is it, its administrative structure and reporting lines going to look like? That really opens the door then to say, okay, what can we do? So I'll take it from a self-centered point of view. If I'm in charge of academics, and that includes the academics at, at Machias, and I have people there who are reporting up to me, I can then put out a charge and say, okay, I need you to look at this, or I, I, I'm looking for ideas. Our structure now really impedes that. I mean, we've seen it over and over with the program integration stuff, right? You've got faculty coming up with ideas, but there's all these challenges because these institutions are set up separately. So I, I think there is opportunity for that, but you're right. That has not been the way it's, it started, and, and I think to start, it will be kind of starting with them where they're at. So. Yeah, let me just, um, on Sunday at the, at the board meeting, we had a, a briefing on, on the primary partnership. And I actually went last in the batting order because I wanted to, well, I wanted to be there to sort of figure out where everything was going, to be honest. But a piece of it was the, the fact that although the, it was announced and, and the chancellor set it up as administrative, academic, and structure and governance. And, and at the time, we thought, okay, fine. And I think at the time, it made it sort of made sense. But I said to the board, now that we're where we are, it's we almost have to we have to sort of stop, at least sort of pause a little bit and figure out the structure and governance because that will then set the stage for what we actually do academically and administratively. And and I said it's almost a, a gas pedal, brake pedal at the same time, which I know you're not supposed to drive that way, but that's sort of where we are. The, uh, the system has a call for proposals that would include uh, academic coordination with Machias that might build on, on this whole relationship, right? I think it's due the 17th of March? Yeah. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. So actually, before you sit down, let me put you in the spot. <laughs> um, so, and, 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 and so this, you know, I've already raised concerns about the timeline, but I got thinking about the, the budget finance work, right? So some of that, you know, um, to, to accomplish that, you have to have a model, right? And then, so, uh, so uh, you know, I could come up with maybe three models, sort of top of my head real quickly, for what would be administratively at, at Machias. And yet, besides you and Sue Huseman, the Structure and Governance Committee doesn't have any academics on it. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and yeah, okay. so, go ahead. this has come up. Um, and this this very conversation is one that I have had with um, Jim Thalen and a little bit with the Chancellor. Um, the, the, the Structure and Governance Group has to now, in a sense, be um, reshaped a bit. Mm -hmm. We actually have to have um, some finance people involved. And we act actually have to have probably the provost involved. We need some people with operational authority on both campuses. I mean, we, we've sort of gotten to, a, uh, I'd say, a fledgling point of realizing we have, we have a couple options going forward. 
we have to do some modeling, but we actually need different people on this team to, to flesh this out and, and come forward with a viable plan, because we don't. I mean, the, the Board of Visitors members are great, and, and actually the Board of Visitors member from Machias has been very helpful, because his view of the must-haves at Machias are very limited. He wants a campus that provides education, community outreach, and is a cultural center for that region of the state. And he is not pushing for a president. He's not pushing for anything. He really is looking for something that, that hangs on to what is necessary to, for the regional health of Washington, really, the region of Washington County. So he's been very good to have on the committee. But we need a different structure of people right mm -hmm. now to, to go forward. So yeah, that's, so yes. Thank you. Uh, John. Um, I think there's an opportunity here for innovation and uh, creative thinking that could be synergistically helpful to both units. You know, within eight miles of the, of the Machias campus is the Blueberry Hill Research Farm, this footprint. Uh, within a quarter of a mile of it is the Machias campus. We have our cooperative extension office. There are faculty from all over this campus who are doing research in Washington County. I think there are opportunities for Machias students to have internships, to have outreach educational opportunities, to have field experiences that could help shape who they want to be, who could also be advantageous to the faculty here who are trying to get things done. And it could be a real win-win. So I hope somewhere along the line there is some vehicle opportunity or I'm, not, I'm just I'm suggesting some kind of ombudsman or, or liaison relationship. Somebody to say, how do we do this? Who, who do we talk to? Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a great point. Some of the ideas that you mentioned, that they are in these uh, disciplinary team reports. But of course, they're limited because we only time to work within the discipline. If you broaden that out, you can come up with more ideas. Like I'm looking over at Heather, it looks nice today. Um, uh, who, you know, they come up with ideas about a uh, you know, semester at the sea we have at the Brian Wayne Center semester at, uh, at Machias is a semester at sea, opening up opportunities for Machias students to come there or to come here and work with our, you know, our excellent marine scientists faculty. So there's really lots of opportunities like that. Um, it, it is really kind of just figuring out, okay, when do we push the button to go? And, and again, our caution is not push the button to go and, and have the university may absorb all the costs of these, to be honest. <coughs> you know, and that's why we're, we're kind of well, it, pushing back. Can I ask a follow-up? Um, is there a way, in a, in a pleasant way, to push back to the system to say, if you want us to do this, and I think our STEM ambassador program is an example of that. They wanted integration, they've given us some seed money, now we're trying to build sustainability. But, you know, we, we put a proposal forward, is that, a, is that a model that could be used for some of these other things to say, we'll try some of these, will you give us some incentive to do it? So, I'll make the first point, I always push back pleasantly when I push yes. back. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and yes, I think there are. I'm less pleasant, so we work well together. Uh, 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 so, for, for the faculty and staff of the University of Maine at Machias, under whichever model yeah. we evolved for, what incentives are they going to have to have the model succeed? Or you could look at it the converse, you know, what are the consequences if it does not? Mm -hmm. uh, because the concern I would have is that you know where the uh, where the knight in shining armor that's you know, ridden in and they're going to you know solve the problems and it's now humane problems. So I'm trying to what are the incentives for humane Machias to have this be successful? Yeah. That, that's a that's a great question and that gives uh, my 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 editorial on that is it is it is not about the, the folks there. They're all good people. The ones I've met work hard, uh, but. Uh, there is a, a, a culture there, and it's not so much, well, it's maybe in, in all areas, that, well, we're trying our best, and, you know, it didn't work, and we're a million short again this year, so we get bailed out. And, and I mean, to me, it was most obvious, and I, and I think I could say this, in the, in the enrollment area. In, um, enrollment, the enrollment just went down, down, down. And yet, uh, they closed the campus to visits from students starting in, like, April. Uh, through till September, um, because uh, just busy and, and didn't really have time to to, to do it. But that's a culture that um, has e evolved, in my opinion, because oh well, we didn't make it over time, you know. Um, but we're still all here, you know. So I, I, I'm, I'm talking about not answering your question because that's a real that's a real tough one um, because I do think it has to be this mix of wow, look at these fabulous opportunities for me as a professional through my affiliation with the University of Maine, the opportunities, again, you know, the thing that comes through from my meetings with faculty there, 
are really dedicated to their students, wow, they're great opportunities. We we'll work hard uh, for that. But this one about sort of, you know, when you say, gee, you know what, it's not cutting it, so we're not, we're not going to do this anymore. Um, they haven't done a lot of that. You know, they, my observation is they've been, you know, again, I, people working on that sort of, oh, well, I guess we have to cut everybody a little bit. So now, I don't know where marketing and communication started, but it ends up with one quarter time one person's position. Uh, or, you know, enrollment management had like three employees, one of whom was also the head varsity coach for two sports. Um, uh, so it's kind of reducing everything to keep as much as we can afloat. Um, and again, I, 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 you know, I, I can understand how you would get into that mindset. And I think part of the challenge is, is you're hitting the nail on the head. How do we change that a little bit? So there is this uh, you know, right incentive structure for people to engage. It's a, t it's a very tough one. And other, any other thoughts or questions? I'm yeah, I, I can't <coughs> help but think a little bit about the Hutchinson Center, you know, as, as we're, yeah. you know, as we're talking, and um, and also the comment that you just made about the Board of Visitor um, in at Machias, who, you know, it's important for them to, you know, maintain this cultural and educational hub, mm -hmm. not necessarily wedded to any particular degree program necessarily, but one of the things. Um, that would be important to talk about at some point is the opportunities for all sorts of you know non-degree, non-credit, yes. professional development type programming mm -hmm. that could really help boost the the opportunities for the people that live in that area. Sure. And yeah. it's a beautiful little campus. I the first time I was there, I think it was last fall, and I was I th I thought it was a door you know really nice little campus that I can understand why they you know they want to sure you know they want to keep it alive and there's so much opportunity there there could be a lot of opportunity there for more types of if we broaden you know how we think about education so it's not just degree seeking but it could be some other things as well I'll just say to the group I have used the example of the Hutchinson Center mm -hmm. uh, in my conversations as this work has unfolded. It's not directly analogous, right. but there are lessons and uh, the Hutchinson Center is, is a model. Mm -hmm. And in part I've said that, you know, the Hutchinson Center has a director who's very integrated in the community, really plays a role in community leadership. The fact that the person isn't called a president doesn't detract from the ability to do that kind of work. And, you know, that kind of uh, that, that there's a lot that can be done from a small campus integrating into the community, yeah. so, yeah. Okay, I'll, let me take a few minutes to just give you a quick update on program integration more broadly. Okay. I got to go. See you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, uh, so, you know, we, this is, uh, I guess, year three of uh, program integration. Um, uh, so the first thing I want to announce is, of course, you're probably already aware of this. There's a new, uh, a new person in town, the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, uh, Robert Neely. Um, and he is now responsible for advancing um, the, the program integration. Uh, I, um, I, I want to say a few positive things about him. I think he's a very thoughtful person. Uh, I was on the search committee that uh, hired him. I really honestly thought he was the, clearly the best, but maybe the only really viable uh, candidate uh, for the job. He very, very much wants to be uh, data-driven, very much wants to be inclusive in decision-making. So I think he comes in with the right kinds of attitudes. He inherited uh, challenges, I'll put it that way, um, uh, and uh, has been charged with doing a lot of things in a short amount of time. And I think he's doing, uh, you know, actually quite a good job of uh, bringing some sense of organization to it and be a thoughtful way to move it forward. I, um, I wanted to show you a little bit about, these are, the, the content of these slides are stolen from slides he, um, you know, he shared with me, but he shared with uh, different groups about where he's at in, um, in the program integration work. So as, as I, I hope you know, we've done two rounds of this now. Um, we did nine uh, teams uh, in disciplinary areas uh, two years ago. Last year, we did seven. Um, what he's done is gone through those, all those reports um, uh, so for the round one ones, the, the initial reports as well as their year one update reports. And he's, um, he uh, has tried to look at how to, how to narrow down some of the scope. Because some, some of that came out with lots and lots and lots of recommendations, like an overwhelming number one. I see Laura smiling back there. The English department, or the English discipline wins the, the, the prize. Uh, I lost count at 154 of number of possible things that could be done. So trying to bring, trying to bring some organization um, to it. 
The other thing I've been in, impressed with is, um, you know, he, he's putting out sort of, okay, here's the next steps, but he's very open to responses. So I, I, I'll leave a little nursing for the moment, but these have involved our faculty or, or administrators. So in the math department, he came up, he met with Nigel Pitt, I guess I'm Nigel here. Again, I, I thought it was a very constructive conversation. Nigel had some very good ideas. Um, Bob was open to, open to those and, and open to looking at how to move this forward. Uh, similarly, uh, um, when he, he moved forward with, with some information, missed some others, Dane Humphrey contacted him in the engineering, corrected that right away. Um, and then uh, Emily Dean Haddad has been in touch with him uh, on the English one, I think it helped to shape it a little bit. So I, I've been impressed with his ability to, or his willingness and openness to sort of hear and, and you know, in a realistic, constructive way, think how do, we, how do we move this forward. So I think he's bringing some organization to it. He's got um, some things that have gone out. He's looking for, for so, so he's corresponded now with team leaders for all uh, 16 teams. Um, he's asking them to develop a work plan. Probably going to give up on that, but <laughs> originally it was going to be by December 1st. One of the things that they're looking for is to have some kind of annual meeting. Now, you, you might project onto this this idea of a, a scientific meeting where people present, uh, you know, papers and things. He's actually leaving it pretty um, flexible. But the idea is he wants this to become part of the culture here that the, the, uh, the uh, disciplines from the different campuses get together. And, and originally, or, or in, the, in the early stages, these meetings might just be focused on how do we move forward with the ideas that were developed in our program integration teams, where are we at, what's worked and what's not worked, how, do we, how can we advance and do a better job. But he is being very flexible in how those could be set up. He's asking again for reports by the end of the year. Um, uh, George alluded to this a moment ago. So one thing he's got uh, that's very helpful in that uh, for two years, uh, having been very involved in the program integration, we didn't have, he's got access to, to funds now. And what um, he's done is put together what he's called the pro uh, program integration, or sorry, program innovation uh, fund. Um, just last week, on Friday, he, you know, we'd had lots of conversations, we meaning he and the chief academic officers, uh, about what this would look like. Um, but he's developed some guidelines. He shared them with us last week, uh, and as well as application materials. Um, as George mentioned, uh, in these, there will be uh, proposals due on March 16th. Now, my apologies, I have not, I have yet to send all this out around to the campus. Um, but that's, there's rhyme behind my reason behind my rhyme. I, I, um, uh, I want to work with the deans, who I'll be meeting with uh, the, the week after um, uh, Thanksgiving, to have a conversation about what, what, how do we want to move this forward uh, at UMaine so we do it in a more thoughtful way. I was very concerned that a report or that a request not just go out uh, to faculty without bringing in deans and chairs so they're part of this conversation. And we'll, we'll develop a way to process uh, 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 proposals here on campus. Um, I, I am, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, think, uh, I think very highly of Bob Neely. I think he's a very uh, a good guy. But I don't want people going directly to him with academic things, right? I'm still the goddamn uh, <laughs> provost here at the University of Maine. Um, and uh, I'm not ready to walk away from that job. So, and, and, and similarly, I don't want people jumping over their deans saying, I, okay, the dean doesn't like this, but hey, I can get some money from Bob Neely to do it. And then I'll come back to the dean and say, look, I've got some money, um, so I'm doing this, right? Those are the things I worry about. So I, I wanted this to be thoughtful at University of Maine. We'll have a discussion. I've got kind of the template of it, but I want to bring it to the deans um, when we get back. So, and I think that will still give folks time to meet the March uh, deadline. We'll get something out officially um, uh, in December. Uh, fun. Oh yeah, so then in April there'll be an announcement. So I think again that's a positive step. The way we tried to shape this was to say, look, the program integration teams have done a lot of work and come up with a lot of good ideas. And again, you know, um, uh, some of which they were very excited about, which we then uh, uh, ignored when we uh, gave them feedback on what we wanted them to work on. Because we, the chief academic officers, saw other things as being a higher priority. This is a way to then say, oh, look, we want to work on this. Here's what can come out of it and here's some funding to help to, uh, to launch some of these things. Um, okay. Um, the other thing that he's doing and uh, is long overdue to be done, uh, that's a phrase, long overdue, uh, is tackling some of the barriers. 
<clears throat> when this whole program integration work started two plus years ago, uh, the, the, the structure had a, uh, it still does have a program, uh, oh, it was a POC, Oversight Committee, and I serve on that. And very early on, the, the, the model was, okay, we want to get faculty groups together to talk about what, you know, how they could work uh, together to improve quality of academic programs around the system, uh, how to be uh, 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 collaborative, increase access for students to our academic programs. And we don't want faculty groups to get bogged down in a bunch of administrative issues, like how's the, how's the tuition going to be shared and what, you know, things like that. So we said, tell us what these issues are. And we actually came up with a list of 56 of them. Um, the problem was uh, no one did anything about it. <laughs> no one took responsibility for that. That list exists, uh, and it wasn't anybody's responsibility to work on it. Um, uh, unfortunately for Bob, um, he's inherited the list, but he recognizes that's what has to be done. So he's in early stages. He's still thinking through how to start to address these issues that are really impediments to, to working together. I think he, he's talking about the program integration team reports as a barrier, and I, I, you, know, I don't, you shouldn't interpret that in a negative way. What he means is there's so much in those reports, and we've narrowed them down. How do we make them manageable? How do we prioritize and make them manageable? He's viewing our partnership as a barrier because, uh, again, everything's out of sequence, right? We're, we're supposed to be thinking broadly seven campuses. Oh, maybe we're not seven. Maybe we're six or six and a half. And, and so it's hard to, it's kind of the only point that Michael Grillo makes. We're do, there's so many things are happening at one time, it's, um, it's hard to sequence them. So that's a, a challenge. Um, and then the current collaborations, which are, have been developed and I think are good. We have, I think, an, an interesting one, uh, Masters of Education in uh, Instructional Technology. It's a collaboration with us, USM and, and UMaine Farmington. I think it serves a niche. It's online. Our, our, uh, our DLL is uh, taking a leadership role, role in this. Um, and we worked out a way to share tuition and things like that. But is that the best model for the whole system? I, I don't know. We just worked it out and we got people to sign off and, and we're moving forward. And so he's seeing it as a challenge or a barrier because, you know, um, if there are 50 collaborations, we can't have 50 models uh, for doing this stuff. So he's got to come to terms with that. On his not very short list of things to do, um, his next priorities are going to go back and look at this uh, unified online. Um, as you all know, a report was put together. Uh, I don't think, well, outside of a very small group of people, no one really embraced that report. Uh, even the Board of Trustees, um, I think the language they used was uh, accepted the report in spirit or uh, and not in detail. But, you know, we've always known that it, it, this um, Having the University of Maine system campuses work more collaboratively, online is a big piece of that, and we've got to figure out a, a structure for that. So I think he's doing wise. He actually, we got ahead of him. Was, uh, I, I, I had him up for a meeting here and surprised him by bringing Monique in. So we got a half an hour with him, giving him some of our ideas about what could work collaboratively uh, and really where our, what our thinking is. But he'll be meeting with the, the, the three campuses that are most heavily involved in online. Augusta, us, and, and uh, I should say USM. Um, and then his other big thing is that he's, uh, I think these are his words, shocked um, at the, the, the level and quality of data he has access to. And, um, you know, the variability uh, around campuses for institutional research is, is dramatic. We are at the, clearly at the very high end of the, um, of the continuum. Uh, we have uh, very strong folks. We could use more uh, uh, because there's a lot of work to be done. But, uh, and, and I'm very much in um, support of this, you know, the Vice Chancellor is saying, look, if we want to do this, we have to make data-informed decisions. We can't, you know, we can't, um, we can't move forward in a data vacuum. Uh, we can't move forward uh, because, um, well, my, my pet example, you know, <clears throat> three legislators, you know, complained about difficulty with students transferring. Therefore, we have a problem with students transferring. It's got to be a giant problem. It's a, it's a, it's, you know, well, what are the data? And, and so he is, uh, he's, you know, um, working on that. I'm still, I think really in all likelihood he'll be looking at, they have, they have people at the system who do institutional research. Again, good people working hard. Uh, but I think he wants to elevate that and so that he can start to get quality, um, quality data from around the campus. Now, um, he's going to come to, well, he actually works on our campus. He's in Esther Hall. 
Um, but um, I've asked him not to wander aimlessly around campus, <coughs> but uh, to come by invitation um, uh, because of what I'd said earlier. So I have invited him to come meet with the deans. Uh, so he'll be here on the 29th uh, uh, to meet with the deans. We'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, um, uh, we'll talk about a variety of things, but we'll talk about the Program Innovation Fund. Uh, and the next day, he'll be meeting with the faculty senate at the... Um, uh, at the, the uh, what do they call it, the members, uh, the members meeting, uh, to start, to, you know, to share with them a little bit about um, his thinking uh, and, of course, to address uh, uh, their questions. Uh, I, I um, you know, thank Mike Scott for inviting him, and, and I'm going to say, Mike, I hope the invitation extends to me because I promised him I'd go with him. <laughs> um, and, uh, not that he's afraid, but he's not a fool either. <laughs> so uh, that's where we're at with uh, program integration. Uh, Thoughts or questions or about that? Great. All right, well, thank you very much for coming to the forum. And uh, again, if you wanted to add additional comments, you can go to the website and you can type them in. All right, thank you.